Ah, TF2 Air. The community game mode that used to absolutely slap back in the day. Nowadays it's kinda dead along with some other game modes that I would hopefully like to cover in the future. But for the purpose of this video, I'm bringing it back, baby. Let me show you how absolutely amazing this gem is. So if you have no idea what the name of the game refers to, it's a WarioWare inspired collection of TF2 specific micro games that you need to beat to earn points. It can be enjoyed solo or with others, best played with friends, and absolutely bonkers when the server's popping. So every four rounds, the whole game speeds up a bit, with four intervals of speed ups culminating into a boss round, earning you five points if you complete it. At the end of the game, if you have the highest score, you get to kill everyone. Every so often, a bonus game is announced, which starts a roulette that alters the conditions a bit. Some of these changes involve the lowest scoring person winning, double boss rounds, or other wacky effects. It's quite rare to encounter it, so it's always special to have a bonus round. Alternately, sometimes the game will take place somewhere else and instead pit you and whoever's in the server against each other in rounds to see who can beat the games first. If you lose, you're down one life, which you have three total to start. Once there's two people left alive, they'll face head to head in a boss round. Whoever outlasts the other wins. With that out of the way, let's talk about some micro games. No, no, no. Air Blast! This title applies to a few games. You either need to air blast rockets that rain from above, or knock your enemies into a wall of spikes. The second variant features either pyros or scouts with the force of nature. Good reflexes are definitely needed in that second game, whereas you have ample time to ready yourself on the first. Try and hit someone or do a rocket jump if you're really cool. Avoid the kamikaze! One person plays as a scout, and everyone else is a heavy. The scout's job is to blow up at least two people, and the heavies are trying to stay alive. Stand as far away from that bob -omb as possible. Sometimes you can get away with being somewhat close, but kept at a fair distance. It'll just do heavy damage, which won't even matter at the end. Break a barrel! As a scout, use your bat to smash a barrel. There's always less barrels than players, so it's survival of the fittest, or whoever is in the right place at the right time. You can always try to kill the enemy scouts if you can manage it though. Don't move! But you can still taunt to move ahead and spit right on the only rule of the game. Don't stop moving! If you run into an enemy team member, chances are you'll both die. You'll need constant motion to win as one roadblock and you're dead. Get on a platform! You'll have to make it to the race platforms before the deadly water floods the arena. You can body block the enemy team and make them miss out on a point. Just remember the weight of your sins crashing down on you when you're on the receiving end. Get to the end! As Scout, make your way past the moving saw blades and reach the end. If you manage to complete this game and have some extra time to kill, you can die on the saw blades and still receive a point. Hit an enemy! It's killer b- oh, Fuck me! Rocket Sticky Needle Flare Jump! As Soldier, Demo, Medic, or Pyro, you need to perform a jump with your weapon before the ground explodes. There's no indicator of when it will, so I like to delay my jumps just a smidgen. Simon says! Do whatever he says. Someone says! Don't trust that guy. Type the answer! Word! Color! These games force you to type the answer in chat, so you'd better be good at typing in order to get the clout from getting the math answers first. As for the colors, try not to typo, though some servers are forgiving about them. Do this spy crap! As spy, do the meme pose or else you will die. At this point in the song is when the game starts checking to see if you are crouched and looking up. If you're gonna goof off during most of the round, never miss that moment, or you die. HIT THE TARGET! As soldier, sniper, or spy, hit the target that appears in the distance to win. The ultimate display of nerves. If you're sniper, you can't afford to miss a single shot. Soldier and spy are pretty easy, though with soldier, I find leading your hitscan shots work better for some odd reason. JUMP ON A HEAVY'S HEAD! Scouts must jump on the heavies, and the heavies must not get jumped. The tiny baby men need to swerve around the scouts, and the scouts gotta really pinpoint their landings. This game is hard for both classes, and it's definitely one of the great equalizers in this game. DON'T GET SCARED! As Pyro, don't get spooked. The only truly safe area is one of the four corners, as even if you peek out just a little bit, you have a chance of getting scared. Sometimes you don't even have enough time to run away if you start in the middle of the map, so you're shit out of luck there, bud. AVOID THE TRAINS! The scouts must not get run over. Absolutely random game where you have no idea which side the trains are coming from when it starts. You either get destroyed right away, or you're just perfectly positioned to not get hit. Laugh at those chuckleheads who died. 
Hit 10 gifts. This game features Sniper. It helps to use the scope, as playing with a high sensitivity could hinder those who tend to jitter a bit. You can make a decent amount of mistakes, but that wouldn't matter if it was one of those head-to-head -head rounds. Flipper Ball! The scouts must ascend, and pyros must descend. As scout, it's pretty easy to see and avoid the falling balls. The pyro version of this game is kinda harder overall since you need to go the same direction as the falling balls, forcing you to pay attention to what's ahead of you and behind you. Jumping is always a good idea since you go marginally faster overall up or down the hill. If you make it to the end on either of these games, you can run back and get hit by a ball to earn the point for winning anyways. Fight! Stay alive! This game features either regular mercs duking it out with slightly nerfed melee weapons, or two Halloween boss characters. Sometimes you can play defensively if you're playing as any normal class, but the Merasmus and Horseless Headless Horseman rounds are way faster paced for any of that. When hit by those blows, you may just get sent flying back into the spike, so be careful. Catch the cubes! The scouts must collect three cubes to win. It's hard to determine where the companion cubes are going to appear, and sometimes you just aren't fast enough to collect them before they disappear. Unlike the Break a Barrel game, there's definitely enough cubes to feed every scout their points, so just keep trying. Touch the sky! As the scout, mash spacebar until you ascend to heaven. Avoid the bombs! The pyros must survive the carpet bombing of the arena. Try and take the high ground, as if you air blast a bomb away from it, you should be relatively safe. If you're in a scenario where you're gonna have a bomb detonate below you, try and sticky jump to avoid any further explosion damage. Cart race! The demo men must complete a single lap of the race course in the bumper cart. There aren't many tips to know about this game, but getting used to the cart physics would be a good start, especially for the boss round version of this game. Bumper cars! As the heavy, try to stay alive while knocking your enemies off the tiny platform. More often than not, you may find that nobody wants to make the first move, which could net everyone a point. It's really tempting to hit someone, but it may just lead to your doom instead in many cases. Don't push your luck, but it could work out for you. Taunt kill! This micro game features NG, Demo, Pyro, Medic, Sniper, and Heavy. This game is kinda bullshit a lot of the time, because like before, nobody wants to be the dude that makes the first move. If you initiate a group taunt, you'll be completely invincible. If you're playing the sniper variant, you're only awarded the point if you yoink your arrow out successfully. In many cases, you'll perform the initial stab stun, but someone else will pull up and taunt kill you instead. This is not the case for the medic variant, as the initial stab deals one damage, which technically counts. Parachute! The drunk bastards must parachute to the floating platform and shoo anybody else off of it. Activate your chute as soon as possible and try to glide to safety. The sooner you're on the platform, the more you're at risk you are from drunk infighting. But in the case of head-to-head -head battles, landing on the platform first will net you the point. Water War! The Jurati Sodden Pyros must kill one of the other players to win the point. The forced third-person perspective can really mess with your timing, so good luck. It doesn't matter if you die after killing one other person since you still get the point after. Spy crab limbo. The spies must crab walk under the laser beam to win. You're only allowed to move as long as you're spy crabbing, like that previous game taught you. At the end of the game, taunt with all your crab homies is a display of dominance. Get on the beach and avoid the shark. The swimming soldiers must make it back to the beach, and the pyro shark must feed on three soldiers. This is a game where you have to be lucky enough to not get noticed by the shark in the first place. Maybe it's best to hang back and let someone else catch the shark's eye first, then make a beeline for the beach. As the shark, you're naturally way faster than any of the soldiers, so make a beeline towards a big group of them and hope for the best. Treasure hunt. The demo men and scouts must search the environment for a treasure that spawns in shortly after the round starts. The demo man variety of this one forces you to search for a who war somewhere in the arena. To circumvent slow swimming speeds, use the grapple hook to dart around like Miles Morales. Keep in mind though that the who war on top of my head is not the treasure. The scout version of this game puts you in a massive mansion and is way harder than the demo one. You're looking for a spell book with the sunbeams unusual effect around it for visibility. You won't have time to search every room, so good luck. You gotta be kidding! Piggyback heavy! The pyros must catch up with the heavy and right click on his back to hop on, and the heavy needs to cross the finish line before three pyros piggyback him. This game is very one sided for the heavy if he knows what he's doing, outpacing the pyros and cucking everyone out of a point. To run down the hill is suicide, and everyone is gonna be hopping around. Kinda of bullshit with Team Collision 2, and would be a much better game without it. Probably my least favorite one. As the pyro, 
take you and your bomb head right to Marasmus to stun him. Don't be too hasty, as being in proximity of someone else who blew up Marasmus first will end up killing you. Sometimes you can even get the point without exploding as long as you're in the right zone for it to register as a win. HIT THE BALLS! Scouts with the Necro Smasher must hit balls to the enemy side while clearing out their own side. The team with less balls on their side wins the round. Since this is the TF2 bouncy ball we're working with, it's unpredictable where you're hitting them. Always try to aim it at the other side to get it somewhat consistently flung. If you tie, everybody loses. Disguise. The spies must perform a basic function. No real tips here, but don't try and goof off with voice commands after you disguise because you can't get out of the disguise kit menu. It'll just disguise you based on what number you hit. Pop the pastime jack! Scouts with the Necro Smasher must blow up one of several jacks scattered along the arena. You have to hit it seven times before it blows up, and you can also hurt your fellow scouts too. Kill someone to be a dick or just straight up steal their jackpot by timing the last hit in your favor. Pirate attack! As Demo Man, you need to... Uh... Mm, well... You know what? This game fucking sucks, and no matter what people have told me, it just doesn't work out. It says to jump over the ship, but it does nothing. If this were a functional minigame, I'm sure it'd be pretty fun. Most people just take their L when this game pops up. Nobody likes it. I can't stand! Pick up a plate! The Chebis must choose the right edible to consume. If you pick the wrong plate, you'll be spooked for a split second. Every heavy is getting something different than you, so enjoy a leisurely microgame and a snack to boot. Street Fighter! Pyros must use the Hadoken Taunt to kill the enemy gamers. The projectiles you fire can cause splash damage, so try to aim at the enemy's feet. With less people on the server, it becomes a game of luck, but it's way less of a factor the more people are playing. Race to the finish! Soldiers in bumper carts must race their way to the end of the obstacle course. You either love or hate this one. The technique I picked up is to boost and jump at the same time before hitting the ramp. The one that's secondary is a risky move to make. It'll take some practice to get used to, so try and learn all those wacky cart physics. Long jump! Scouts must evil Knievel their way across a burning lake of lava in their bumper carts. Just line yourself up with a big ramp and right click to win. Of course though, you may end up running into the Bombonomicon pillars, which is infuriating for what seems to be such a guaranteed point most of the time. Boss games! Rocket jump course! As soldier, you must ascend to the top of the tower while a killing liquid slowly rises from the ground. If you've been rocket jumping for years, this may be the easiest jump map you'll ever do, but always remember not to bonk your head on the ceiling. No! Score seven goals! Demo men must lob their pipes into the hoop. If you beat the game early, you can fire the remainder of your ammo at every other participating player to prevent them from getting points. You can practice your sick pill air shots too while you're at it. Push away the enemies! A group of spies precariously wage war on top of a crumbling structure. The last to survive wins. It's really hard to beat this one, as the more you get hit, the more fall damage you take. On the same token, sometimes there's no ground to stand on as platforms drop without warning. Try playing defensively, and good luck. Jump rope! The Pyros must jump rope until time runs out or the last one standing wins. This game is unbelievably easy to survive. Health drains while you're away and refills when you're at the center of the stage. If you crouch jump, you'll have longer air time, making clearing the rope super easy. For some reason, not a lot of people get it. Hope this helps. Mandrill Maze! Heavies or medics must reach the end of the maze to earn their points. The heavy version of this game has more at stake. Trailing behind a pack of heavies can be a death sentence since the mandrel kill wall can catch up with you pretty quickly. It's best to try and take an early lead by making slick corner turns and maintaining as straight of a path as possible. The medic one is kind of lame as there's no dying from the mandrel wall and you just ride a cart the whole time until you and whoever else makes it to the end wins. Frogger! The Austrian frogs must reach the end of a long and deadly obstacle course. The falling crates are sometimes geared towards screwing you over, preventing you from going further in the game while that one guy makes it to the finish line uncontested. At least the other obstacles are a little more fair and fun to overcome. Despite the one blemish, I love this boss game. Ghostbusters! Medics play the role of the titular Ghostbusters and must heal all the ghosts until they die. Spies become ghosts and must evade the medics at all costs. 
Heavies are the Slimers, and must punch the Ghostbusters to death to secure the W for you and the spies. As Medic, your controls get kinda fucky when you're locked onto a ghost, but on the other hand, you get Ubered. Try to keep following them around to get the kill. As a Heavy, it takes two punches to kill a Medic, and you move at roughly their same speed, so use that mobility to ambush and kill them. As Spy, don't die lol. Reach the end! The heavies must make their way across a perilous course to win. This slow moving obstacle course will challenge your ability to platform, especially at the ending. You can't jump from thin ledge to thin ledge on the second part of the course, and jumping while above the pit will instantly crash you down. If you make it to the end, you can go back and die and still get your point. Survive Monoculus! The Pyros must survive the onslaught of Monoculus. This one is a toughie if someone dares try to fight Monoculus using his own missiles. Doing so will send it into its rage state, shooting three round bursts of fast eye rockets. The Monoculi attack indiscriminately, so it's best to try to stay as far away from them as possible. Air blast your opponents or eye rockets at your opponents to really screw with them. Avoid the red floor! Scouts must survive the red floor arena and make it outside of the building twice. At the beginning of the rounds of this micro game, double jump before you hit the ground, or else you'll take fall damage. Double jumping all around the arena can cheese the hell out of this game, but always keep an ear out for that gate to open. If you stand too close as it opens, it may end up killing you, and if you miss it entirely, you'll die too. Grand Prix! Pyros and bumper carts must win the race. It's basically that standard micro game version of it, except you have to do five laps. A word of really good advice though, when you're starting a new lap, don't fling yourself too far with your go-kart strafe acceleration, as going past a certain point will set you back to the end of the course, preventing you from lapping until you perform the quarter pipe jump successfully. Dodgeball! The Pyros must play a mean game of dodgeball and survive. It's a community game mode within a community game mode, except in this dodgeball, there's no indicator that a rocket is heading your way. You can't really orbit rockets either, so I hope you time your air blasts right. Lord knows I gotta practice it too. Back! There's so many more micro games that I missed, scattered across different types of TF2 wear maps, so it's gonna be up to you to find, learn, and beat them all. The ones I listed are found on tf 2 wear 2 underscore A4, and even then there's a few I missed from there. To kind of sum up my thoughts, it's probably the most casual game mode TF2 has to offer, as people from any skill level can play and have a good time. It's really great in short bursts, and is always a riot when you've got a bunch of buds to play it with. The repetitive nature of the game can show itself at times though. Despite that, it's something I'm always going to remember with fondness and nostalgia. If you're ever getting fed up with the state of casual, it's not hard to see why. <laughs> grab some old buds and head into TF2 where for a nostalgic romp. That's about all the time I have for now. This has been Happy Happy Cultist, and I'll see you all again real soon.